The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the way of justice for the sake of his name. Even when I walk through the valleys of despair, I fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will remain in the house of the Lord through all eternity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know whether he's a sinner. Here's what I do know. I was blind and now I see. They question him. What did he do to you? How did he heal your eyes? And he replied, I already told you and you didn't listen. 
Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They insulted him. You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't know where this man is from. The man answered, this is incredible. You don't know where he is from, yet he healed my eyes. You know that God doesn't listen to sinners. God listens to anyone who is devout and does God's will. No one has ever heard of a healing of the eyes of someone born blind. If this man wasn't from God, he couldn't do this. They responded, you were born completely in sin. How is it that you dare to teach us? Then they expelled him. Jesus heard they had expelled the man born blind. Finding him, Jesus said, do you believe in the human one? He answered, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. And Jesus said, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Jesus said, I have come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard that, heard what he said and asked, surely we aren't blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you wouldn't have any sin. But now that you say we see, your sins remain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So true story, when I started writing this sermon about two weeks ago, because yes, I work way ahead, at least with a crummy first draft, if I can, the sermon was supposed to start like this. When was the last time you were watching live TV? And I mean live, like not recorded or streaming, and it was interrupted. You know, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important message. Broadcasters interrupted for the explosion of the Hindenburg, for the attack on Pearl Harbor, for political news and world news, for the deaths of celebrities, and for high-profile car chases. What counts as breaking news since the Hindenburg has changed? But eventually you feel some relief when the broadcaster calmly announces, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Little did I know that by the time the fourth Sunday in Lent came around that we would be up to here in breaking news and interruptions and disruptions. Pastor and artist Sarah R. reflects on how her grandfather believed emotions like fear or sadness were not to be seen. In her poetry, she says, the wilderness is here to interrupt your previously scheduled programming. Like water in the desert and setting the slaves free, the wilderness might be the very thing we need, the very thing we dream, the very thing we plead for. See, the wilderness is a place of interruption, of disruption. In the God gospel story of the man born blind, there is significant disruption, right? It's actually interesting to note that for most of the story, everyone is talking about the man rather than talking to him. And for the record, he never asks to be healed. The man who was born blind is just out there minding his own business, begging as he usually does when Jesus and his friends walk by. And one of those friends asks Jesus a question about the guy. And Jesus responds with a less than straightforward answer. And then he spits on the ground and he makes mud with the spit and the dirt and he smears the mud on the man's eyes and he tells him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And it works. And then the debate and conflict about the healing begin. It's quite the disruption. There's confusion here, confusion about the man born blind, about 
how he was healed, about what power Jesus wields. The confusion is so dominant that even for those of us reading the story, it can be disorienting. So the disruption has caused confusion among his community. And then the disruption causes conflict among the leaders in the community, the religious authorities. The leaders are concerned about controlling the narrative. They don't want to believe this man born blind because it goes against the story they want to tell. They want to frame Jesus as the sinner, not the hero in this narrative. Jesus is disrupting the order the community knows so well, the order that the man born blind, his neighbors, his family, and the religious authorities depend on. What Jesus does for the man disrupts the order and turns the community backwards and upside down. What Jesus says to the authorities is backwards and upside down. I have come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see and those who see will become blind. It's just like that last will be first and first will be last business that he likes to preach. Slats Tool says, as the wilderness is known for disruption, metaphor, transformation, even confusion, it is almost as if with this mud Jesus uses to heal, he brings the wilderness to the community, giving them a taste of what his kingdom will truly be. In the middle of the city, in the middle of this community with established norms and practices, Jesus disrupts and brings the wilderness in. The wilderness is a place of disruption. The wilderness is disorienting. The wilderness can also give us new perspectives. The wilderness is a place where you might get interrupted, where your plans might not go the way you expected, and where you might get messy. We usually think of the wilderness as dry and deserted, not muddy. But when Jesus brings this disruptive wilderness in, it gets muddy. He spits in the dirt. He smears the mud on the guy's eyes. Now, I don't know about you, but here with hands dry and cracked from all the thorough washing, on day seven, eight, or nine of social distancing in the COVID-19 era, or as I've also heard it called, self-distancing for the good of the realm. It's sort of startling to see such close, messy, germy contact. This pandemic has most certainly been disruptive. I know for me it is disorienting. My usual go-to skills of planning and organizing are failing me in this particular wilderness. If you, by chance, have been trying to work from home, learn new ways of using technology to connect with folks, and trying to help your kids stay on top of their schoolwork on Verge, Education Galaxy, Edmodo, Seesaw, Vocabulary, and Actual Paper, then you know all about disruptions. And I hope, as we have tried new things, as we have shown compassion to our neighbors and to ourselves, as light has shined on the brokenness and vulnerabilities in our systems, that this wilderness will give us new perspectives. The gospel story is about a disruption, an interruption of the regularly scheduled programming, leaving us with before and after, then and now, who we were yesterday and who we are today. And we are in the middle of our own story of disruption as we long to return to our regularly scheduled programming. But maybe when the interruption is over, we won't go back to the way it was. Perhaps we will learn and grow as we wipe the mud from our eyes or rinse the soap from our hands things will be different. In the gospel story, before the interruption, the man is blind. After the interruption, he can see. Once I saw the world like this, now I see it like this. 
Once I believed this, now I believe this. Our lives have all been interrupted and we find ourselves in a wilderness that is disruption. So what are your stories? When have your eyes been opened? When your life returns to your regularly scheduled programming, how might you see things differently? Will we mark this particular disruption as a turning point, marking before and after? In this story, Jesus brings the wilderness to the community, giving them a taste of what his kingdom will truly be. How will God give us a taste of what the kingdom will truly be in this wilderness? And how will we as individuals and as a community join in the realization of that kingdom that we get to taste and see? The disruptions that cause us to mark the befores and afters can be wilderness places, times and places we never wanted to be in. But as Sarah R. says in her poem, these disruptions, this kind of wilderness can be just what we need. The wilderness is here to interrupt your previously scheduled programming, like water in the desert and setting the slaves free the wilderness might be the very thing we need, the very thing we dream, the very thing we plead for. Sometimes getting a little mud in our eyes or spending a little time in the disruptive wilderness that is self-distancing for the good of the realm is just what we need to be able to see clearly, to let the truth out, to open our eyes to the good news Christ brings. Sometimes the disruption of wilderness time puts us on the right path or the right mindset or brings us new perspectives so that we can fully live the life that God has made us to live. Thanks be to God that in our comfortable homes and in our uncomfortable wildernesses, in our regularly scheduled programming and in our disruptions that God is with us. And that this God by the, who, <clears throat> by the power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ever ask or imagine. So to God be the glory, amen. And now I invite you to join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in a wilderness God who breathed life into dust, turned seeds into flowers, and flooded the sky with stars. We believe in a wilderness God who went hungry in the desert, walked barefoot on the water, and taught from the mountainside. We believe in a wilderness God whose love could be described as nothing short of wild. So with confidence and hope, we long to follow our wilderness God, who walks with people on their darkest nights, who sings hope into places of grief, isolation, and suffering, and who exists in the form of untamed joy, relentless love, and impossible hope. Step by step, may it be so. Amen. Now I do, again, want to thank you all for your patience. This is a strange time for us as we are discovering new ways to be church together. And so here's a reminder of the things we're trying to do. We've come up with sort of daily themes for the week. So you are experiencing our first Sunday worship online, uh, live from home on Zoom, or perhaps recorded later and watched at a time that's more convenient for you. On Mondays on Facebook, we will be posting music and meditation. This will be our music and meditation Mondays sharing. Um, hopefully we will get folks from the community, from the congregation to share music and thoughts connecting with our theme of wilderness during this Lenten season, or perhaps things that just are a good comfort and assurance in this strange time. Tuesdays will be Tuesday Tickles. We'll be connecting to share our joy. 
Wednesdays, we'll have Big Table at Your Table. You can find on Facebook prompts for ways to um, continue to connect with each other and have some activities you can do at home and share with the church family. On Thursdays, you'll get our regular weekly email with announcements and prayer concerns and some ways that you can love our neighbors, like um, supporting Networks Cooperative Ministries, the Net Food Pantry, and Clifton Sanctuaries. And then on Friday, if you would like, you can join our regular Friday morning church at prayer group online at a Zoom meeting where we share the joys and concerns of our community and pray together. So keep checking your Facebook email or webpage for more information about ways to stay connected in this wilderness. And as we turn to God in prayer, I ask you to remember those that we have named in our uh, St. Andrew's weekly email concerns from within this congregation, and especially those who are affected by this pandemic, those who are ill, those who are afraid, those who are medical professionals helping to care for the sick, the grocery store clerks who don't get to stay home and telecommute for the families who are adapting to new ways of being together. Um, remember them in your prayers, and we hope that God will open our eyes to see new ways to love our neighbors. So let us pray. God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need, for daily food, for guidance and protection, for healing and in injury and comfort and sorrow. You respond in abundant provision. Thank you for your tender care of us. Thank you for soothing the wounds of this life. Thank you that in the presence of enemies, especially the last enemy of death, that you are with us as shepherd, host, and home. Knowing your faithfulness in our lives, we bring before you the lives of others, the cares of this world, and trusting all things to your goodness and mercy. Bring healing to those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. Bring freedom to those unjustly accused relief to those burdened with debt, comfort to all who suffer from abuse of any kind. We pray for people living precariously in this world. Protect, we pray, citizens and soldiers and first responders alike. Teach us to put away our weapons, taking up instead words of peace and reconciliation. By the power at work in Christ, break down the walls of hostility that we build so that we may learn to live together graciously. We remember those living in the midst of drought and famine. We pray for rain to fall and crops to grow and for generosity to overflow from our own hands and resources until all your children receive their daily bread, until all your children have clean water to drink, until all your children have adequate shelter and medical care. Compel us to be better stewards of creation so that our habitation is sustainable and responsible. Loving God, help us to see the world as you see it, to see others as you see them, and to see ourselves rightly too. Because you have come into this world for judgment, we can leave our judgments behind. Pursue us all with your goodness and faithful love until goodness and faithful love fills every heart and informs every action. We pray these things in the name of the one who came that we might see, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our lives overflow with the goodness of God. We are all called to return to God the gifts of our time and talent and treasure that God has entrusted to us. So if you would like to contribute a financial gift, you can do so by mailing a check to the church or through our online giving for which hopefully you can find a link provided. We invite you now to rejoice in what you have been given and in what is yours to give as we sing together. Now let us pray. Accept the offering we bring, O God, in response to the love which you have poured into our hearts. May our lives bear witness to that love in all we say and do. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Friends, we are in a surreal time 
in a wilderness of disruption and still God is with us. So in the midst of the disruptions and disorientation, look for God's presence, sometimes found in smeared mud, and listen for God's call to join in bringing the kingdom by loving God and loving neighbor. And now go out into the world, but really stay in your safe place as much as you can, living your hopes and not your fears, knowing that you are held in holy hands that will never let you go. Amen. Blessed be.